comments. So, uh, more on those comments from Britain's biggest police force, the Met. Should it matter if the Metropolitan Police is whiter than the city it keeps order in? And why? Well, I'm joined by Lee Jasper, chair of the London Race and Criminal Justice Consortium and a former advisor on equalities to the Mayor of London. Ken Marsh beside him, chairman of the Metropolitan Police Federation and Adam Elliott Cooper from King's College London. Very good evening to you all, gentlemen. We'll just stay with that. Does it matter if the Met is too white, Ken Marsh, and why? Of course it matters, but how much? It does matter. But we, what, what we need to get into context here is that we have changed massively, and I mean massively in my service. And yes, I would sit here and say, we want more BAME officers, no issue whatsoever. But we are moving completely in the right direction. We have far more than we've ever seen before. Absolutely What's correct. What's about 14% of the Met now in terms of sworn Four, officers? 14 and percent and in comparison to the 43 forces, we're way above all of them. We need to keep working together, but we need my colleagues sitting around the table with me to help us do that so that we can entice, invite, get people from BAME communities to want to apply to become police officers. OK, but well, let's rewind to, the, to that initial question, Lee Jasper. Does it matter, and if so, why? Yes, it does matter, because you need to inspire confidence in uh, one of the most multicultural uh, cities on the face of the planet. So you want a public service and a police service that reflects the community it's seeking to serve. It uh, addresses issues of legitimacy, confidence and trust. And uh, uh, in a modern uh, city like London, multicultural like city like London, representation matters. Mm. Uh, the notion that it's going to take us 100 years to get there is absolutely pathetic. I mean, you know... We're, we're, as black citizens of London and taxpayers, we want, we want equality now. Oh, no, wait, another 100, 2,119. Is that what we're really saying we have to wait till until we get a diverse yeah, I want to police service? That in more detail. I mean, it seems, it seems rather strange that it'll take a century. But, but Adam Elliott Cooper... It's nothing Cooper, to brag about, is it? Absolutely not. Adam <laughs> Elliott Cooper, on the, uh, on, on the issue of, of why it matters so much. I mean, because underlying this, we've got the McPherson report from 20 years ago saying that the Met was then institutionally racist, um, and that's why it matters, isn't it? Um, I think we should be unsurprised that so few uh, mm. black and minority ethnic people want to join the police, given the kinds of policing that we've seen in this country over the last 10 years. We can see the fact that uh, around zero, between 0 and 1% of racism complaints are upheld generally uh, by the police in England and Wales. We can see that black people are more likely to be searched for things like drugs, despite the fact that the police's own figures indicate that they are more likely to find drugs mm. when they stop and search a white person. So for all of these reasons, and many, many more, we should be unsurprised that black people aren't joining the police, including the Met. And and won't change, I think, until that time changes. And is it that perception, you know, I use that phrase, it's hung over the Metropolitan Police for the last two decades. Is it that perception that the Met are still institutionally racist? I think, I think there's a perception, but there's also a reality. Um, that you don't have to be an academic like me to know all of these stats, to realise that in many ways a lot hasn't changed with the Metropolitan Police. And I think until that happens, we're not going to see people joining the Met Police from minority ethnic OK, groups. got to bring Ken Marsh in that. Well, you say a lot has changed. It has changed. And I, I, what saddens me is when I hear the language, uh, and we're sitting here and I'm hearing it again, what we've got to take into context is... When McPherson report was written, Stephen Lawrence sadly died previous to that, 80% of my colleagues who are in the Met now weren't in the Met. So that's a fact. So they have to be given the opportunity to be driven in a different direction and perform in a different way, which is what's happening. Because there will always be an element of something that isn't correct. But what we strive to do is have complete transparency, and you've seen that by the rollout of body-worn cameras, by all sorts of things that my colleagues are doing that has changed totally the perception of policing and how we well, police. Well, that brings in the pace of change, though. I mean, Lee mm. Jasper touched upon it on this 100-year thing, mm. but, you know, doing the maths on that, McPherson came six years after the death of Stephen Absolutely. Lawrence, and you're, it, it's another two decades since then. I mean, that is snail's I, I, I don't understand change. the use of those words, the 100 years. That's nothing. I, that's okay. no quote that I've ever made well, and I, would never make. I mean, what? that's something you can throw around and none of us will be around to, uh, to check out whether yeah. it's true or not. But uh, we know about the last quarter Absolutely. of a century, Well, we know don't it's we? true because the head of Met's HR is on record in the statement today in reflection about the 20 years since the publication of the law report as mm. saying it's true. The, the figures come from the Met, essentially. 
Um, so they are uh, 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 right. But, you know, the problem is, is I think, for the police, is it, the institution is institutionally racist. So it doesn't matter about the individuals, whether they're older or new. They're brought into a culture of institutionalized racism. And by the way, the Met are recruiting black people to the police service, yeah. but they're not keeping them. And the officers that they do, well, they that, well, they're not, because they have a higher loss rate, attrition rate, for uh, new black officers, Can particularly in their first two years. I mean, do you know that? I mean, it, it, are there statistics on oh, that? Yeah, oh, yeah. There's, um, yeah freedom, of, them, freedom, um, freedom of information requests have mm. been carried out. The Black Police Association have made a number of recommendations mm. in, in relation to attempting to retain more black officers within the Metropolitan Police and police services more generally in England and Wales. And that retention is so not So we're talking, happening. I mean, the recruitment, Dermot, the recruitment more, rate is quite high, is it? I had more senior black officers in the Met when I was policing director than there is today. My goodness me. OK, and so that, that was 10 years ago. So have you got any reasons as to, to why so many of these recruits then don't stay beyond their training or whatever? I think um, if we look at the ways in which um, complaints against the police in relation to racism are dealt with, um, i.e. the fact that they're almost never dealt with, you know, with between no, uh, almost over 99% of complaints against the police um, in relation to racism are not dealt with, and the reason given by the police um, is that it's generally dealt, these complaints of racism are generally a misunderstanding or a miscommunication, which the, is the exact same excuse given by the police to the Lawrence family over 20 mm. years ago when we had the very same problems. And we get an awful lot of complaints from within the Met, mm. don't we, from BAME officers about discrimination, being passed over for promotion, and uh, that doesn't seem to be ending, does it? Yeah, the, the whole issue that's come out over the last week or so that I, I wasn't aware of, I must admit, about um, increasing the ranks of BAME officers, I think needs to be looked at very carefully. And I know the Commissioner today has said that that will be looked at more closely as to how you're moved forward. But we are a disciplined organisation and we do have a structure of how you can go forward with promotion. I, I, I would like to look more closely. I accept fully what's being said mm. and I would like to look more closely at how we can change that as well so that we can keep our colleagues when they come into the police because I represent them and I want to represent well, them Well, you moved me nicely on because that's what I want to pose to, first of all, to you, Lee mm. Jasper. How? How uh, could this retention rate in particular? It doesn't seem there's a big problem with recruitment, but um, retention, all important. Retention and then promotion. How can that be achieved? Well, you have to dismantle the empire that is the Metropolitan Police Service. Yeah, well, dismantle it. Literally. I mean, that's a bit radical. If you, well, if you, if you find an organisation to be institutionally racist, and that's my conclusion at least, then you have to institutionally dismantle the power base of the organisation. Give us some examples, though. Give us well, some you have to take away discipline. You have to take away disciplinary matters uh, uh, in relation to the in, to, in terms of Met officers. You have to look at recruitment separately. Uh, uh, you have to look at even at their training. Is it is it right to train in some sort of quasi paramilitary style at Hendon, or should they go to colleges and uh, uh, with other vocational trainers and so on and so forth? So there's a whole That's series uh, of measures you could you could take, you could de-establish the office of constable. That's a 12th century conception that allows an officer to be granted the prerogative from the Queen to determine whether something's legal or not. Right. That gives him the power to do that. Now, if you were to reform and modernise policing constitutional base and re-disaggregate uh, uh, the Met Empire into, its more, into a more balanced civic uh, statutory uh, partnership, uh, I think you see a great, uh, greater progress. Wow. Ken Livingston increased black and ethnic minority okay. recruitment by a hundred percent. I mean, I just want to get your thoughts on that, Adam Elliot Cooper. I mean, this 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 idea of um, what is it uh, downgrading the, 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 the role of constable? Is what get rid of the role about. of constable. Okay. So they, 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 they reforming the arrest. office of constable. Okay. Reforming the office of constable. Okay, and also, but then a lot of outsourcing going on there, and in, independent training, independent discipline, training, discipline recruit, regulation. Discipline. Yeah. Okay. I think a lot of the problems that are being identified with recruiting more black people into the police is, is very much reflective of the kind of policing that people experience. So if we begin to tackle the kind of policing which leads to black people being not only disproportionately stopped and searched, but disproportionately arrested and disproportionately charged. In fact, it, experiencing disproportionately harsh treatment at every juncture of the criminal justice system. Uh, until we start to address those kinds of issues yeah. on the ground, we will not start to see any changes. Uh, uh, just lastly, uh, interesting, Ken Martin, your reaction to some of those practical measures uh, about bringing in a really mm. independent scrutiny, because there is this perception, is there, that the Metropolitan Police is still a, a white men's club at its core, you know, this Masonic cult or something like that. <laughs> I, I, I don't see the things you're saying, but... 
uh, in relation to changing how we are and bringing in a different representative group to monitor what we do, that's recently happened. The IPCC changed to the IOPC. You know, in terms of where we go forward with how we bring more BAME officers into the into the police. I'm open to any suggestion as to how we can do that, and I think the commissioner is as well. Well, we've had a few tonight. Uh, yeah. You're very much the key open. one is stop I'm, discriminating I'm looking again. at that very carefully. <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> Lee Jasper, I'm sure. Ken Marsha, Adam Elliott, Cooper, very good to see you all. Thank you very much indeed for all your contributions. Now, uh, I'm going to try some Rabbi Burns here. Bear with me. Awad some power, the gifty gears to see ourselves as others see us.